My name is Michael Myers. I'm the Managing Director at Tag One. We're going to be talking about the Open Web Application Security Project, the OWASP Top 10 Vulnerabilities. I know you guys use a lot more technologies than Drupal as your organization has grown. Uh, a lot of our examples are going to focus on specific Drupal security announcements. We're going to broaden a little bit beyond that as well and cover more of that in the future. Uh, today's topics, we have insecure design. We have security misconfigurations and XML entities, and we have server-side request forgery. So for those of you who aren't familiar with Tag1, I should just a really quick intro. Um, we are a large global team of subject matter experts, best known for our work creating much of the Drupal CMS, which you guys are using, and it powers around 3% of the internet. We work with a lot of technologies. Uh, we're helping automatic prototype real-time collaboration support into WordPress. We're working with Google to make the internet faster through uh, optimizing things like image compression and making their JavaScript-based squoosh application embeddable into your application. Uh, in the healthcare space, we do a lot of work in Python with the University of Michigan and the state of Michigan around big data analysis for COVID statistics. Uh, and we're working with one of the largest uh, hospital groups in the nation, overseeing a massive migration of uh, hundreds of sites, just under a thousand websites, uh, where we're coordinating and overseeing uh, multiple digital agencies uh, and leading development on uh, a pretty complex system. Let me introduce you to our uh, two speakers today. Uh, Yanez, who uh, most of you met yesterday, uh, is our senior technical architect. Um, in addition to his work and background in security, uh, he has a really uh, diverse background. He's authored research papers and giving conference presentations on Scrum. He's a huge community leader, uh, has organized and participated in code sprints, events, meetups, and has spoken at numerous conferences. Um, he's also a leading authority on multimedia handling in Drupal, where he oversaw a major rewrite of Drupal's media handling capabilities. That's pretty much the core of what Drupal is and does, is management of content and media. So, uh, Giannis, thank you for joining us. And uh, also, Fabian Franz, who's our VP of Software Engineering. Uh, Fabian is a performance and scalability expert. Uh, he is the lead of our Rust-based load testing framework called Goose, uh, which is the most scalable and easiest to scale load testing framework out there. He's behind uh, almost all the performance and scalability code in Drupal. Um, and he oversees all of our projects, uh, including work around real-time collaboration for a top five uh, Fortune 500 company, uh, among many other things. So thank you, Fabian, as well. Um, I'll leave it to you guys as to what order you want to kick these things off in, and I'll hand it over to you. Thank you, Michael. The first topic that uh, we will cover today is A04, Insecure Design. Uh, this is a new category for this year's top 10 list. Um, it is also a very broad category because um, you know, it covers a lot of things. In a way, it also interacts with other categories to some extent, but not necessarily all of the other vulnerabilities that we are talking about are related to design because we can have you know secure design that has the insecure implementation um, and this is you know basically um, makes that design not work as intended um, but then on the other hand if we have insecure design we won't be able to achieve secure implementation um, in any case. So the reason why this category is on the list this time is to raise awareness that uh, we should incorporate thinking about security even before we start implementing our projects. So what kind of issues are we dealing with here? Um, like the top three, the top three issues that they are listing is displaying error messages that contain sensitive information. Well, it sounds obvious, but it happens a lot of the times. Um, Drupal specifically has, you know, a nice 
tool a nice configuration that helps you do that uh, and you know, to helps you achieve that you are not exposing sensitive information. Um, and this is like here if in, in the UI, in the configuration development section, we have this login and errors configuration. And here we can, we can display, we can decide what kind of errors we want to display. Um, and, and none would probably the, be the best option for production environments. But then, you know, when you are working in your local environment, you probably want to have something more verbose. Um, and what I usually use is everything with backtrace information. And if we would forget to, you know, somehow forget to change this as we're moving from local development to production, um, we could be exposing a lot of information to anyone that we don't want to expose. Um, so this is one example of, of good design where we have developer usability, but also like protection where we need it. Um, but this design can be misused uh, if we misconfigure this configuration. For example, what I usually do, or we usually do, is um, we have like uncommitted settings, PHP files on various environments. Uh, where we you know, hard code this configuration value so it cannot even be overridden through the UI. Um, and what we would typically do in local environments, we would use this configuration, which is you know, display verbose, that would be the one with backtrace. And then on production environment and also on UAT, for example, we would use this one. Uh, which hides everything, like the one here. Now. And then if you have these files on your environments and they are not um, included in Git, no matter what you deploy or how you deploy or what configuration is stored in your configuration files, these values will always override everything else. And that's you know one way to ensure that uh, uh, you always have configuration that um, you tend to have. Um, if you are using some other system or, you know, building your own framework, then this is something that you can think about and make sure that uh, you're displaying what you intend to display. Uh, but for example, maybe you can use Drupal as, as an inspiration and develop something similar. Or if you're using some other framework, um, get involved in the community there and figure out what the best practices for that framework are. Um, yeah, so the next, the next issue that is quite common is unprotected storage of credentials. We've touched on this topic yesterday already when we talked about password, passwords and, and how passwords are cached and things like that. Um, so again, we can see that there, there is some good design with Drupal uh, when it comes to, to this specific issue. Um, and again, if you're using some other system, um, try to learn what best practices are there. I'm pretty sure that every you know, uh, major framework would handle passwords, for example, uh, in a secure way. But if you're building your own system, then again, you can either use Drupal or um, any other framework as an inspiration uh, to figure out you know, what kind of hashing functions to use to hash passwords, uh, how to use salt with with those, how to use uh, multiple iterations of hashing and things like that. So yeah, it's really hard, like it's really hard to give concrete you know, steps that you want to 
did you need to do in order to achieve secure design? Uh, it's really important that you're constantly learning and understanding you know, what the current best practices are, uh, that you model threats so you understand how your system could be compromised and try to prevent uh, these threats that you've come up with too. It's also important to uh, constantly review and improve this threat modeling because um, you know, there are always new ways uh, that attackers use to, to try to get into our systems and we need to be you know, on top of that and, and learn and constantly review what's going on and, uh, and how to protect ourselves. During my career, I really found out that you know, being involved in a major open source project like Drupal uh, really uh, helped me do that because with a big and vibrant community uh, with a lot of people that are smarter than me, uh, it's much easier to learn. Because uh, you know, when you interact with with such a community, um, you you get exposed to all these ideas and all this knowledge. While on the other hand, if you just close yourself in a room and and try to do everything by yourself, it's pretty hard to keep your skills sharp and, and knowledge up to date. Um, one thing that is really important to mention with insecure design, and unfortunately, we can still see that is security through obscurity. Um, and this is also one of the recommendations uh, here in the document. Uh, I'm not sure what it's mentioned, but it's definitely mentioned here in the doc. So security through obscurity is not security. So we, we shouldn't rely on, on that. We should use proper techniques. Um, another important aspect with uh, in secure design is uh, working with your security professionals, like whether they are in-house or maybe you know outside collaborators. Uh, when you are designing a system, when you come up with a design, let security professionals review them and um, and give feedback. Um, and just like we mentioned yesterday. Um, uh, about peer reviews when you're when you're implementing code um, it's also important to have similar culture in the organization um, that lets you know that lets people speak up and raise their their concerns if they have any because um, only that way you will achieve the best and the most rock solid design um, if uh, if comments and raising concern is not welcome, then people will just stay quiet and there might be issues that will go unnoticed unnoticed for that reason. Also, I work with security professionals um, and develop like secure development workflows. Um, we can also do like, it's not specifically, this is not specifically about the system design, but also the the workflow can can help us um, achieve secure application as a result. So have a defined development workflow, um, and uh, you know with security in mind. And um, yeah, this is another layer that can help you achieve good design. Um, one thing that is really important in my opinion, and it's often overlooked, are third-party dependencies. We are used to, you know, rely on so many libraries or modules or, you know, whatnot uh, to, to achieve what, what we want to achieve with our applications. Um, and sometimes we blindly trust those libraries and dependencies and modules, you know, however we want to call them. Um, and that's probably not the best idea because you know, even these things 
uh, can have bad design or bad implementation. So as part of the, the design decisions, we should really consider which dependencies to use, um, how many of them to use, review their track record, uh, people behind them, um, how they dealt with security issues in the past and things like that. Like don't just blindly pull in every composer or NPM package that seems to be doing what you need to do. Um, and sometimes that's really hard to do because um, we have like cascading dependencies. And then if we pull something in, we can get like tens or even hundreds of other libraries. And that's really hard to review. Um, so maybe there's some other way. Maybe, maybe there is, you know, maybe we can do this, the same thing with a simple class in like the custom code, or there is another dependency that doesn't depend on hundred others, uh, which would be easier to maintain and easier to review. Um, let's think about this issue as well. Um, yeah, I would also like invite you to to go through like the the issues that that are mentioned in the design because this will give you like insight into what kind of issues we need to deal with when we're designing our systems. And we already mentioned passwords and unprotected storage of other credentials as well. Um, but there's also encryption and you know, we have to think about whether we have sensitive data, do we want to encrypt it at rest? Um, how to do that, how to do that securely? Um, then a classic design failure would be uh, relying on you know, the file name to process something that was externally supplied. Um, things like if, if you rely on that, um, the, 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 the practice shows that at some point this will break. Somebody will change the file name, even if you, I don't know, communicated it or um, um, even enforce it some, uh, some other way. But yeah, relying on naming for things that come from the outside world is uh, definitely a bad, bad practice. Uh, yeah, then things like restricting uploads, restri restricting resource utilization, um, thinking about your business logic. Um, does it really do what it needs to do? Um, all these things are important. Like here in the document, there are attack scenarios. And I found this one interesting. Like um, it talks about a cinema group that allows booking discounts uh, for maximum of 15 attendees. But then if the business logic is wrong, um, an attacker could book hundreds of seats with the discount and cause a uh, loss of income. Um, which sounds trivial, but uh, these things happen. So um, something to think about. Uh, Janice, mm. I yes. one thing more. Uh, one thing that also happens in practice is that people think of all the good things and still get it wrong. <laughs> and that often happens, um, for example, when people start to implement their own cryptography or they start to implement their own password comparison function. Like often it feels like, um, as you already said, um, big frameworks like Drupal or other frameworks are um, protecting you in a way that your custom code usually cannot. Because um, while you can think of all of that, one needs to understand that Drupal and the whole internet as well has a history of, of that new issues have been found, new attack vectors have been found, etc. So, for example, if you use uh, for a simple password comparison, just a simple string comparison, 
then uh, it will, and maybe that's covered elsewhere, but then for example, it will easily lead to a timing channel attack where you can determine the password uh, just by, by checking how long it takes till uh, the comparison breaks and um, hashing to, to one string and then comparing the hashes to solving that particular problem. Um, but just here again, um, if you ever think about implementing your own crypto, don't. <laughs> um, use a library, use certain patterns, etc. And even in huge enterprise organizations, it's something uh, that everyone needs to be reminded again, because things like, hey, we're just encrypting this and, and using this and doing this ourselves quickly, it feels simple, but it's not. And there's a lot more to all of those like industry practice standards, for example, for encryption than meets the eye. And again, using frameworks uh, and libraries. And here, dependencies are very, very good. I agree here with, uh, with Yanis that it can be a risk, but it can also be really good because a library, if you're using a library and it's used by 100,000 other people and it has security defect in its encryption method, it's much more likely it will be found before someone exploits it on your system than the other way around. I definitely agree. Um, and being somebody that looked into implementing cryptography myself, um, I can just confirm how overwhelming it can be when you start to look into all the details and um, different modes of algorithms and you know like the, the number of details that you have to think about is just flabbergasting um yeah i mean that's mostly what i had to tell about um insecure design it maybe sounds quite vague um and i said it is a very broad topic um but Hopefully I was able to, to just um, make you start thinking about it, maybe in a different way. Um, yeah, another thing that I wanted to mention, and it's not, this is not entirely design related, but in the Drupal communication, there is writing secure code uh, document um, that if you didn't read already, um, could be interesting. It's not speaking specifically about design. Uh, it's more about how to use Drupal's APIs correctly. Um, but even with that, it gives some insight into the design decisions behind uh, Drupal and, and how they ensure that Drupal remains a, a security design system. Um, so learning, learning, learning. This is something that we have to dedicate our lives to in this industry and as people in general, I would say. Um, yeah. Are there any questions or comments you'd like to discuss this topic? If you have any insights or your past experience. Awesome, thank you.